<laughs> Look at our beautiful baby boy. <laughs> Previously on Scared and Unprepared, Gene Rosalini abandoned his home and embarked on an adventure across Alaska to perform an experiment. Gene believed he could live as early mankind did until he decided that it was a failure and began his mission to walk around the world. This quest ended after he stabbed himself in the chest. Oh, oh my god. He's dead. John Waterman became obsessed with dangerous climbs and went on a suicide climb of Denali, or Mount McKinley. He was never seen again. Carl McCunn, a photographer, went into the wild alone to take pictures. He arranged a helicopter to drop supplies, but forgot to arrange a ride home. When he runs out of food, he takes his own life. Oh, f Everett Roos went by the name Nemo and traveled around the country much like our current subject. He disappeared in Utah and has not been seen since. On this week's episode, we follow Chris McCandless, a supposedly bright graduate from Emory University, who ventures into the wild to fulfill his dream of living without responsibilities and only off of the land. Join us as he travels scared and unprepared. Come on in. Thank you. The name's Alex. Alex? Just Chris. Oh, Chris? No, it's Alex. Alex. Just Alex. So, do you think you have everything you need to <laughs> help you survive? Oh, I am sure that I have everything I need. In fact, I brought this 10 pound bag of rice right here, you know? I'm well prepared. You see this? This is good stuff. And you thought that was it? Just underestimate me, because I have. Even more rice, right here. And yeah, that's that's all I'm gonna need. Rice. Rice. I have sunglasses. So here out in the wilderness, it takes a lot to survive. You're gonna need all your survival tools. So I have all mine packed right in this big bag full of stuff as you can see. And rice. So, uh, it's, uh, winter in Alaska right now. Aren't you gonna need some, uh, better shoes? Well, these bad boys can get me anywhere. They, they brought me across the country, you know. Your feet are gonna freeze to death back out there. You can, uh, borrow my boots. No, I don't need them. Just no. Take the boots. No, I don't, I don't want, no. Just take I the boots. I don't need them. Just no! take the boots. No! Take the boots. Hey, you can, uh, you can take my watch and also... Here's my money too, you know? What? No, take it back. No, if, if you don't take it, I'm going to throw it away. I don't want to know what time it is. I don't want to know what day it is. None of that matters to me. Anyway, we're here, so please get out of my car. Yeah, okay. What I was complaining about. Alright. Finally made it into the wild. You got the birds up there. I'm here. <laughs> so I pretty much figured that this Chris kid would go off into the woods, start starving after a week or two, and come back out like any normal person would. What was your response after you learned that he died after only three months in the wild? That kid died out there? That dumb frick fracker. So were you aware that Chris was unhappy with his life at home? We figured out that something was up when he stopped communicating with us. When we found out he donated all his money and left school, we panicked. And how did you react to that? Well, we began by hiring a private investigator, Pete Kalitka. Yeah. Nothing important here.
guess Chris must have been great at covering up his tracks because the closest we ever got to finding him was his car. But Chris gave out his social security number. Shouldn't it have been easy to find him? What? His social security? Really? Dr. Click. <laughs> so, Crane, were you aware of Chris's unhappiness with your family? Yeah, of course. We were really close, and Chris would share everything with me. Why didn't you do anything when he told you about his experiment? That was the weird thing. He never told me anything about it. He just cut off communication with me. Do you approve of Chris's mission? Well, obviously not. I mean, it killed him. And honestly, I thought it was a little selfish. He hated our parents so much that he just decided to abandon me with them. It was so selfish and unlike him. Most people don't know this, but Chris agreed to let the crew of Scared and Unprepared document his endeavors. Chris was given a personal camera that he kept on him at all times. Our crew came in once a month to get an update from him. Chris told us strictly to never help him, no matter what. This is the first piece of video found on Chris's body cam. Chris, I'm 24. I'm from South Dakota. I'm going into a wilderness to seek deeper spiritual understanding, and I have never tried marijuana. Chris heavily believed in questioning the arbitrary structure of society. Lenny! Lenny! Which, of course, was respectable. However, abandoning his family and hiding under a pseudonym was not the most mature course of action. While others remark him as a hero, some people think Chris is childish and arrogant. Perhaps his odd obsession with wilderness-themed novels led to his belief that he could survive the harsh conditions of the wilderness. Most of Chris's favorite books were fictional, something that he failed to remember. While we can't expand any further on Chris's motives because they still seem rather unclear, it's time to move on to Chris's adventures. Manukasa. And it's just me, the wild, and this bad boy. This is my crib. I'm actually in the real wild, if you didn't know. No? No? Okay. This is, this is the wild. This is the real, genuine, genuine wild. Roses are green, I saw a blue iguana, and I've never tried any marijuana. <laughs> so the other day, I just finished reading Tolstoy's Family Happiness, and I found a passage that I really liked, and I will read it for you today. I have lived through much, and now I think I have found what is needed for happiness. A quiet, secluded life in the country, with the possibility of being useful to people to whom it is easy to do good, and who are not accustomed to have it done to them. Then work, which one hopes may be of some use, then rest, nature, books, music, love for one's neighbor, such as my idea of happiness. So, you see, this here other day, I, Alex Supertramp, Alex Supertramp, great guy, I killed this here moose, right over here, so we're going on a bit of an expedition to find it today. I don't know exactly where it is, because I killed it a while ago, and I haven't been eating this much lately, so it's a little fun, but we'll find it, don't worry, I got this. I am Alex Supertramp. I can do anything. It, it's it's gone. Where'd it go? Yes, that's gonna, we are. No, that's just nasty. You know, whoever did that, that is not a good person. <laughs> it's definitely not me. I am Alex Supertramp. Alex Supertramp does not do that. <laughs> Wait, what Whatever that is. Go. Day 80 something, I don't actually know. I have a watch, but I can't read. We're gonna get out. We're going. Frick frack, this can't be happening. There's a river. What am I supposed to do? It's Alaska. Yeah. As you can see, I might be a little malnourished. Don't worry, I got my trusty plant book, so I know this thing is great for the body, and will nourish. Oh. 
I am insanely sick. I'm dying and I'm malnourished and I hate everything. In other words, I've never been happier out in the wild. <sighs> so things haven't been uh, looking great for me as of recently. I, I, I can't seem to stop throwing up and I'm, I'm, I'm a tad bit hungry. But don't worry, tomorrow, tomorrow's the day I'm gonna get back on my feet. I'm gonna go get some berries or something. I don't know, I'm just hungry, man. I'm okay though, it's good. Okay, so I, I don't think I'm gonna be able to get back up today. I don't, I don't have enough energy, but it's okay. It's okay because Actually, it's not okay because there's there's a river because what apparently that's what happens in Alaska when rivers it's just I don't know I'm tired Can I just have like one thing of food? I need help. I need supplies. I'm literally about to die over here. Can I have something? No? <laughs> Hell, come on! <laughs> uh, I'm dying, someone help! Should we help uh, him? Uh, I mean, uh, he specifically told us not to. Uh, 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 I'm still dying. <laughs> <laughs> we have now explored the adventures of Chris McCandless. It's obvious to see that he was not really scared, but rather unprepared. He made amateur decisions and ran away to escape his problems like a child. However, Chris can be viewed in a different light. He was one of the very few humans on the planet who lived out his beliefs to the fullest. Nearly all of Chris's acquaintances mentioned the impression he gave. While educated, responsible, and overall a good person. For good reasons, Chris's life choices are controversial, and the real question still remains. Was Chris McCandless a justified hero, or just another stoner who died in the woods? One person who definitely had strong opinions about the lifestyle of Chris McCandless is John Krakauer, the creator of this show and a fan of our protagonist. He viewed Chris as a pilgrim and nomad, and truly felt connected to him during his own naturalistic journey upon his climb of Devil's Thumb. And now a few words from John Krakauer on his relation to Chris. You know, what first inspired me to climb the Great Thumb <clears throat> was this book in which there was a photograph of the Devil's Thumb, a black and white image taken by an eminent glaciologist named Maynard Miller. The mountain seemed particularly sinister now that I think about it. I almost shit my pants, to be honest. It was a huge bin of exfoliated stone, dark and smeared with Mr. ice. Mr. Cracker, what the f***? Get to the point. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Mr. Croco. What does that have to do with Chrissy? Who the frick frack is Chris? <laughs> <laughs>